this video I'm going to show you how I port the sidewalk and I'll show you how I set up those curves there on the sidewalk and how to form those up. So keep watching. So you can see here I'm coming off my patio and then I turn. But I don't want these sharp corners so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a radius on that, on that inside corner and then on this outside corner. When I start forming those up I'll show you how I do that. So people have a tendency to cut corners so if I'm walking down the sidewalk and I want to go that way I'm going to cut that corner. So I want to put a nice big radius right there. So I have my initial layout ready to go. I'm going to get my form board set. I need to figure out the height of my concrete that's going to be between the house and the barn and that's going to determine the height that my sidewalk is. But I want to do the sidewalk first before I pour that section because I don't want, the only way to get the truck here is through this opening right here. So I don't want to have the truck over finished concrete when I'm trying to pour these sidewalks. So the sidewalks have to be first, but I have to set that height first and then I can set my sidewalk height. So depending on your situation, you may want the length of your sidewalk nice and flat, but you probably want to just tilt it a little bit so everything drains off one side or the other. You're going to have to look at you know, the, the slope of your yard, uh, how much rain you get, um, any wet spots you have now, all that you should take into consideration when trying to determine the slope of your sidewalk. So I'm gonna use what's called a hula hoe, or maybe a scuffle hoe, uh, to get any vegetation here inside where my, where my sidewalk's gonna go. Just gonna work it up. This is a pretty handy tool. It actually works pretty good. Uh, I'll leave a, a link in the description if you wanna check it out. So I found the height of my slab that I want over there, and now I can work my way this way. So I'm just gonna start putting my form boards up. When I get to the radius, I'll show you how I do that one. Okay, my form board is 75 inches off the foundation. And wherever I'm gonna uh, splice two form boards together, I like to use a two by four there and split the difference. That way I can screw uh, both form boards into the same stake and kind of splice them together. I normally like to get the top of the stake below the form board so when you're screeting along, it doesn't catch on these and it just makes it nice and smooth. This one's going in real hard, so I'll just come back later and cut that one off. Two, always remember, screw your stakes from the outside. Otherwise, you're gonna have a hard time getting all your form boards off if they're screwed from the inside. You're gonna have to pull your stake and everything up when you pull your form boards. So if you put your screw from the outside, then you can knock your stake loose, pull it out, and then take your form boards off. So that first form board I put up, I kept the same slope coming from where the other slab's gonna be. And then once I got past that point where the water can start running that way now, I leveled out this form board. So this form board will be level. I'll slope the slide sidewalk that way. 
So I want to make sure that this form board is coming off of that patio square. So I'm going to use what's called a 3-4-5 triangle to do that. So I have three foot from this corner to the edge of my form board here. If I measure out four foot and make a mark here, then this hypotenuse of this right angle will be five feet. So if I pull that in right there, then I know where my board has to be to end up being square. So you can see I've got plenty of height here, but I want to get all this uh, vegetation out of here. So I'm going to scrape all this vegetation out, make sure I've got all the loose soil out, and I'm down to a good, hard, undisturbed soil. And then I can put some sand on top of it and pack it down. So to make this radius here, what I'm using is, I got this uh, hardboard uh, like paneling. It's a beadboard, but it's made out of like the masonite, so it's about 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. And I ripped it down to about uh, three and a half, four inches. What I'm gonna do is put it where I made that, that large rabbit there, so that kind of sits flush. I'm just going to bend it around to what looks good. So there's my, my radius. And then on this end, I'm just going to mark it. And I'll cut it off. And then I'm going to try and keep that same radius then for my other corners. So I'm going to backfill this with dirt here, and I might even have to put a stake behind it at this point too, just to keep it, because it is going to be kind of flimsy, because it's so thin. But that will end up being the, the form for, that, uh, for the radius there. So I made this uh, depth gauge here. This is a two by four, which is three and a half inches thick. I put a couple of cleats on each end to ride on my forms. So I can just screed along and get my sand down to a depth of three and a half inches. Once I'm at three and a half inches, I'm going to pack it really good. Then check it again, and this time I want to have like a quarter inch to a half an inch under my screen. Still a smidge high. 
I'm figuring the slab for four inches thick. So anywhere between three and three quarters and four inches would be ideal. If you're going deeper than four, when you figure it for four, you might end up short. It adds up quickly if your whole slab is more than four inches thick. So this type of depth gauge works pretty good for a narrow slab like a sidewalk. What you can also do is make a board that ride on top of your forms and put some 2x4 teeth hanging down 4 inches. So I've built that type of 2x4 rake uh, in some of my other videos on concrete work. So there's going to be a card up here that you can link to. I also put it in the description too. So this is looking pretty good now. Now just to keep it going all the way around. So what I did was I broke down this uh, pour into sections so I could figure the square footage of them. So that little section down there was uh, 22.75 square feet and then this was 82 and a quarter. Uh, over there along the pole barn is 112. And then this bigger slab right here where I'm kneeling is 9.5 by 12, so that's 114. So now if we add all those up, equals 331. Divide that by 81 for 4.08 cubic yards. So you take your square footage divided by 81 for a 4 inch thick slab will give you your uh, cubic yards of concrete you need. So, I will probably order 4 and a quarter. So originally, I was just going to pour this sidewalk and that sidewalk there, but um, now that I'm, I was going to, I was going to put a form board right through here, but I wanted to get this section out here poured too, and I had to steal a bunch of sand from there to fill in here for the sidewalk. So. I think I'm going to adjust my plans and I'm going to pour this whole thing all at once now. So it's pretty much ready. The two sidewalks are ready anyways. I think I'm going to put some mesh in there. And it should be good. I want to backfill the rest of these form boards right here and this one. See it rained about two inches last night and uh, this kind of swelled up a little bit. So. It's drying out good and it's it's hardening back up, but I did have a little bit of a crack there, but I think it'll be fine. But when it's dry, I want to want to backfill it nice and tight. We used wheelbarrows to haul the concrete down the sidewalk, which actually worked out pretty good and it's pretty quick to do it that way, as long as you uh, have two people at least dedicated just on the wheelbarrows. And it was a sunny, breezy day, so that concrete was going to dry pretty fast, so it's best to get uh, the bowl float on it right away and get it uh, smooth and maybe even get the edges done at least one time while it's still pretty wet.
I think this clip here is a perfect example of why you need a bowl float when you're doing this kind of work. As you can see, it was pretty rough when we started, and just going over it with a bowl float uh, helps to get it nice and smooth. I didn't have footage of the rest of the finishing, but I did actually get out there on knee boards, and I finished that portion of the slab by hand. Here's the finished sidewalk. So I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, hopefully this brought you some value. If it did, I appreciate it if you subscribe and hit the like button. Thanks.